Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, let's talk circus. The Green Brothers, otherwise known as the Flying Levans, were born and bred in Bloomington. They were the first of many Bloomington aerial and trapeze acts during, that formed during the golden age of the circus. This was the last part of the 1800s in the United States. The Flying Levans continued to perform well into the early 20th century. They taught themselves to be trapeze artists by developing rigging in their father's barn at the corner of McClun and Croxton Streets, which, as the crow flies, would be just up the road a piece here. Their father was John L. Green. He was a well-known confectioner in Bloomington. His candy company could produce a ton of candy in just a few days. He also had machines which would produce candy toys or figurines. It had been his wish that his sons would join him in this business. But what really happened was through a series of partnerships and buyouts, J.L. Green's confectioner company became known as Bikes. Over the years, the Flying Levans were composed of a variety of members, not just the Brothers Levan. Other members of the troupe included Amy Green, Harry's wife, Charles Noble, Frank Shepard, Harold Casanova, and Tom Kitchens. So I guess you could say their act had everything, including the kitchen sink. The Levans were written up in the Panagraph in 1928 as world record holders for consecutive appearances in the arena of white tents, otherwise known as the big time. They started in about 1877 and were still performing into the 1930s. It was said that the longevity of their act could be summed up in four chapters based on the type of transportation they used. Wagons, the railroad, automobiles, and finally airplanes. In 1931, the Panagraph stated that Bloomington was home to 10 circus acts. A 1952 article said that number had grown to 15, but I've even seen where they said there were as many as 18 acts home in Bloomington Normal. Harry, in particular, became a mentor and trainer for other acts, with Bloomington subsequently becoming headquarters for many of the aerialist and trapeze acts. During the winter months, or the circus off-season, aerialists like the Flying Levans and the Flying Wards called Bloomington Normal home. They would use facilities at the old YMCA building downtown, or the barn specifically built by Eddie Ward in 1915 to train during the off-season. This barn was um, at 1201 East Emerson Street, and was raised or demolished in 1979. This rich tradition of trapeze artists and aerialists started by the Greens continues to this day with the Gamma Phi Circus at Illinois State University. This circus was founded in 1929 by Clifford or Pop Horton. Gamma Phi is the oldest collegiate circus in the United States. Something to be proud of. An interesting aside is that after a safety law was passed requiring the use of a net, one local trapeze artist, Clyde Noble, recalled, recalled that he and his troop engaged fishermen of the Illinois River to construct nets for them. It's because of this and some ridiculing by their friends that Clyde Noble's troop became known as the Fishermen, or later, the Fishers. Come with me now and we will meet Fred and Harry Green, pioneers of the trapeze. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to present Fred and Harry Green. I think you will all agree with me when I say that children hold on to the belief that they will live forever. That they are in fact immortal, and as is the case with boys, virtually indestructible. I was such a boy. And to be completely honest, a trace of that boy still lives within me. How else would you account for this perilous occupation I have chosen for myself? This death-defying business of flying through the air while hundreds watch below, holding their breath 
as waiting hands snatch me out of space and deliver me safely to the pedestal opposite. Fred Green. One half of the aerial act known here and abroad as the Flying Levans. But you already knew that. So pray tell, who's the other half of my act, hmm? Anyone? Harold? Harry hasn't quite come of age yet. Uh, he's um, still in training. Uh, cutting his teeth, as you might say. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised at all if he weren't practicing in our makeshift rigging in our father's barn as we speak. Howard and I built that ourselves, you know. We strung some hoe handles across the rafters a year or so after the circus came to town. But what a show! My brother Howard and I sat spellbound as we watched the trapeze artist flying high above. Well, that's the answer to my question. Howard, Howard was the other half of the act. And together, ladies and gentlemen, we are the Flying Levans. And we are in demand. A more sought after aerial act you will not surely find. I will describe the Double Flying Bar Act. Two leapers, Howard and I, performing tricks unimaginable on opposite ends of the rigging, somersaults, pirouettes, twisters, and bird's nests, exchanging bars as we finally pass each other in the middle. It works every time. Until it doesn't. Harry? Brother! <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't understand. You're all grown up. You're bigger. Indeed. It's 1889, 10 years from now. I'm 22. You're 31. <laughs> That's impossible. And we're partners. We're the act now. Ladies and gentlemen, my brother, Harry Green. Delighted. I should explain. Don't be alarmed. There's no easy way to say this, so I'll simply say it. We're dead. Dead. Dead as doornails. You'll have to excuse my brother. He's obviously fallen from the hayloft rafters and struck his head. Or I have. I am not sure. Actually, Howard was the one who fell. Nine years ago while performing in Indianapolis. Broke his collarbone, I'm afraid. What? Not to worry, he recovered. Unfortunately, not to the point where he was able to return to the act. What is he going to do? I mean, what, what has he been doing these past nine years? Eventually went west and set up a law practice. Did very well for himself. <laughs> well, I'll be. Wait a minute. If we are both dead, as you say, how is it that you remember all of this and I don't? Not entirely sure, Fred. Near as I can figure, it has something to do with that idea you were talking about earlier. About you being the kind of kid who thinks he'll live forever, <laughs> who will never grow up. But listen, these folks want to hear about our act, the Brothers LeVan, not your Peter Pan philosophy. Who? Peter Pan. Not to worry, brother, it's, uh, it's not important. Well, surely you remember Fredrickson Gloss. Fredrickson Gloss. Fredrickson Gloss and LeVan, ah, yes, me, the, the three Russian athletes. Do you remember what the reporter from the Clipper said about the three Russian athletes' performance at the Bachelor and Dora Circus? Aside from the fact that not one of them was Russian. <laughs> I do. The performance of the three Russian athletes surpasses anything we ever saw. The Roman ladders, for those of you unfamiliar with it, is a balancing act involving two ladders standing upright with, with a man perched in between both to keep them from collapsing inward or falling outward. Then, once the first man is in place... No, I can tell it. Or well, better yet, we should show them! <laughs> if we only had a couple of ladders... And a third acrobat. And mm. level ground. You know, there have got to be a couple of ladders around here somewhere. I am going to find them. Ladies and gentlemen, I will be right back. Ah, Fred. A good brother and the best flyer I ever worked with. When the three Russian athletes dissolved their partnership in 1888, Fred and I joined hands, pun intended, and we quickly became the most celebrated flying trapeze act in the world. We first signed with the Rose Hill Burlesque Company and in no time at all moved up to the Ringling Brothers and Van Amberg's Combined Circus and Menagerie. The program listing read, Fred and Harry LeVan, America's undisputed champion and phenomenal triple horizontal bar experts in the latest and most dangerous feats performed with unrivaled ease, grace, and skill. I have to admit, I do like the sound of that. See, Fred and I actually perfected the passing act that he and Howard had popularized. Well, you remember, don't you, the same act that inadvertently turned Howard into a lawyer?
My brother Fred also took a fall, my friends. 1896, although not in the way you might think. We were performing in New York City when he suddenly became ill. Devastatingly ill. Kidney failure. We all believed his first class constitution would pull him through, but it did not. Fred died in 1897 at the age of 39. And less than a decade later, a man named J.M. Barry wrote Peter Pan. A play about a boy who could fly, a boy who never grew up. And yet life does go on, doesn't it? The years, well, they fly by. They fly through the air with the greatest of ease. In 1896, after Fred quit performing, Harry married Amy Bowers after a terribly long courtship of just one week, and they began performing together. Harry had a long and successful career, retiring in 1937 at the age of 70. He would go on for several years training other acts. Arguably, the largest impact Harry made on the circus was his ability to pass on his knowledge to future generations of those interested in the art to which he and his brothers dedicated their lives.